on this fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. It's lovely to be back here with you in St Dunstan's as we begin this live stream of our service. And as we begin, we worship God the Creator and acknowledge the Aboriginal peoples of the Wurundjeri of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we live and worship. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. And we sing together the day of resurrection.
Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a true and sincere heart. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us in love and in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you, and set you free from your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our special prayer for today. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we'll have our Bible readings. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. All came over everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And our psalm is Psalm 23. We'll say alternate verses. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still quiet waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Even, Even though I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. 
Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And our second reading is from the first letter of Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy and all slander, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious, precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you did not receive mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. And the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run for, from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Heavenly Father, may your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Amen. Amen. So how are you going on this Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter, as together we share isolation? It's been a strange season, hasn't it? Unlike anything we've experienced before. And yet, you know, in a way we have something in common with the first disciples after the death and resurrection of Jesus. In that period between resurrection and ascension, the disciples also lived behind closed doors, just as we're doing at this moment. 
Then came the time that we read about in Acts today, uh, that amazing event of Pentecost, and they're still living in the Pentecost season as we read this reading. Here the disciples, and they're still living with persecution, but somehow they've been set free from fear. In the amazing passage that we read from John, which is commonly referred to as the Good Shepherd Discourse, Jesus says in the Greek that he is the door. We've got it translated gate, but in the Greek it's really the door. And as you can see from this passage, and as we know from our lives, particularly at the moment, doors keep us in, but the uh, they also can let others in. They also keep out the threat from outside. But we have to go through them in order to make contact and, of course, in order to forage for food. And we, we've all been rushing down to the supermarket. The door can be seen as a symbol for exclusion. And it has been seen as a symbol for exclusion. Keeping out those we don't want. But at the same time, it is the symbol of inclusion, bringing in those who wish to be inside. At this moment, we're living in the space of exclusion fairly willingly when it comes to coronavirus, but then we're living in that space very unwillingly when it comes to family and friends. There is in life always a tension between inclusion and exclusion. As we hear these words of Jesus, it's very important to recognise their context. This is the discourse or teaching passage that follows the story of the man born blind and his healing. The man, who was blind of course from birth, was excluded all those years by his disability. And then of course he was excluded because of the legalism of the religious leaders and there's a lot of that kind of exclusion that goes on. Jesus seeks him out having already healed him and brings him in to relationship, the relationship of discipleship. Jesus then teaches his listeners and that's what we've read a bit of today and, and you've got to remember that some of Jesus listeners were fishermen so he was teaching them something about being a shepherd and when it says they didn't understand, perhaps that was why. Um, but when he is talking about a shepherd bringing his sheep into the fold and that of course is into relationship with him. Jesus is of course evoking that Lord who is the shepherd, who leads us to green pastures and who prepares a table of welcome and abundance for us. Psalm 23 has a lot of resonance for us just right at this moment in this pandemic, doesn't it? We have, as individuals, as a society and as a world, been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We've all been living in a collective moment of fear and these very consoling words, talking to us about our shepherd who will guide us and lead us helps us as we go on that journey. Last week I had the privilege of reading this, this psalm to Robert as he lay dying. And it was so deep inside him that even in his semi-conscious state he tried to join in the words. From deep inside him he shared that feeling of security and hope which this touchstone of his faith provided. And the picture in the 23rd Psalm is one of generosity. It's a banquet in the face of the foes. And that is what our relationship with God promises. For the man who, though he's blind, hears Jesus' voice and comes into the abundance of a life where he can see and follow Jesus. Like him, we can follow into the abundance that is God's grace. God's abiding love and God's generosity to us and for us. But it isn't just about coming in. 
Jesus also says he will lead us out. We must go out to be fed, but also to mingle with those around us. And we're longing for that, aren't we? We're longing to go out into our community, to be fed by them, but also indeed to feed them. Jesus is a door that goes both ways. We're not an enclave who are holed up against the world, but rather we are salt and light, to use a different one of Jesus' metaphors. Salt and light who go out and shine in our world. Just at this moment, until our restrictions ease a little bit more, we can't physically go out the door, but we can still go out in communication with both those we love and those in our community. And every time we do this, we are doing it from a place of safety, which is the relationship that we have with God. Yea, though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because you are with me, thy rod and staff comfort me. The promise is not that we don't have to face things, but rather that when we face things, we have God with us. That is Emmanuel. The new believers, those new disciples or followers that we read about in the Acts of the Apostles, certainly had plenty to fear. And yet, the picture that we have here in the Acts is one of joy and again one of generosity. It's all about their relationship with each other in the context of their relationship with God. And these things that they did together are still the things that give us life and strength, even in our very particular situation at this minute. The thing that we cannot do is spend much time together in the temple. That's what it says that they did in Acts. Um, and for us, of course, the temple is our church building. It's true, however, when you think about it, that the temple was in a sense a kind of virtual house of God. And so when we meet in these virtual spaces over electronic means, we are still meeting as they were. And what did they do, those first sheep of the shepherd Jesus? Well, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. So they were both listening to God and listening to each other. They met around the table and they prayed together. They shared what they had and ate with glad and generous hearts. These new disciples were in the midst of fear and of persecution, and yet the relationship with God, and of course the relationship with each other, sustained them. I pray that as we go through this difficult season, we too might be sustained. And when this time is over, I pray that we might be found to have grown and to have flourished, to have deepened our relationship with God and with each other. I pray that when we meet again around God's table, it will be with a renewed sense of ourselves as the sheep of God's pasture. I also pray that Jesus' words might be true for us. I came that they may have life, and have it abundantly. My dear friends, may God bless you richly. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to come to a time of prayer now. Good Shepherd, you are the shepherd of many flocks. Hear our prayers for all the peoples of the world. We pray for all who are hungry and without shelter, for those who are frightened or bewildered, for those in the clutches of the unscrupulous and uncaring leaders. Lead us in the paths of righteousness, that your people everywhere may be freed from want. Loving God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Good Shepherd, 
you call us each by name and claim us as your own. Hear our prayers for your worldwide church. For today we pray, pray for the Anglican community in Japan, for the Diocese of the Murray, for Bishop Keith Dolby, the clergy and people, for the Diocese and Building Committee, and the Mullum Mullum Parish in Ringwood. We pray for all who are shepherds in your flock, for those who have strayed from your path, for all who have heard your voice and come to your call. Guide us in your ways that following you we may tread the path that leads to abundant life. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, each of your flock is, a, is precious in your eyes. Hear our prayers for the communities in which we live. We pray for the very old, the very young, and those unable to care for themselves, for the unemployed and those who cannot provide for their families. For all whom we love, for our families, our friends and for ourselves. Protect your people from all danger and harm, that they may know your goodness and mercy in their lives. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Good Shepherd, you speak, seek especially your lost and wounded ones. Hear our prayers for all in trouble or in need. And today we remember Judy Moore, and pray for Judy Moore, John Strong, Keith Gray, Bev Brewer, Anna, Ian, James, Joe and Darren, Dawn and Gray. We pray for those who are anxious, those with no clear direction in life, for the lonely and those who grieve for loved ones, for the sick and the dying, and for all who give them care. Comfort us on each dark and stony path, that in your presence we may not be afraid. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you long to bring all your flock safe, safely home. Hear our prayers for your followers of every age. We give thanks for all who have heard your call and followed you where you have led, and we remember those in this parish whom you have gathered into your fold. And at this time, we remember the passing of Robert Miller and the anniversary of Dorothy Violet Joy, Arthur Frederick, Ian Ernest Boy, Phyllis McKinley, Marjorie Emma Roberts. Be present with us through all our days and at our life's end, bring us safely through the valley of the shadow of death, that we may come to dwell in your house forever. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together our parish prayer. Loving and faithful God, we thank you for all we have and share as a parish community. Continue to bless us, we pray, the people of St Dunstan's. May we be faithful stewards of your word and sacraments and committed to advancing your kingdom in the world in which we live. Grant us discernment and wisdom as we seek to do your will in this local community. Equip us with what we need and enable us to utilise the gifts you provide to fulfil our calling. Help us to grow in faithfulness, compassion, commitment, humility and generosity that we may serve you more fully. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we greet one another with a sign of peace. 
Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is he risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. And the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. you. And we sing together, ye choirs of New Jerusalem. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.